Yo, what's up Dons? Today, I'm showing you how to make your very first 5M resource. To start is a twist on the classic Hello World, going over a couple of the ways that we can execute code. And to finish, something more advanced, including events and how to manipulate them. So if you're new to 5M Lua, or just looking to brush up your skills, come with me on a journey as we comb through the good, the clean, and the optimized. If you're making a 5M resource, then you could be looking for a reliable, high-performance VPS for your gaming community. You can look no further than today's sponsor, One of One Servers. With fast, stable connections and state-of-the-art infrastructure, they guarantee 99.99% .99 uptime, ensuring your community always stays connected. Their unlimited player slots allows you to host as many players as your server resources allow, and their partnership with Cosmic Guard provides advanced DDoS protection so that server stays up. Every VPS comes with NVMe SSD storage and lightning fast 10 gigabytes per second internet speed so that you'll enjoy silky smooth server performance. And it comes with a free Windows license and instant setup so that getting started is just as silky. But really take advantage of those speeds of secure cloud storage and easy to use backup management tools and that means you can rest easy knowing that your data will always be safe. And for a limited time, if you use the code DONH after clicking the link in the description below, you can get 30% off your next VPS order. So what are you waiting for? Join the ranks of other satisfied customers who trust One of One Service for all their VPS needs. And I just want to say a huge thank you to One of One Service for sponsoring today's video. Let's begin with the start of every script, the file structure. Now, if we don't do this properly, our script won't know where all its files are located and therefore won't be able to start them. First, we create two text files and we name them config and fx manifest. And then we ensure that they have the Lua file extension. Next, we create two folders, name them client and server, and in there we create another text file and name that main and make sure that also has the Lua file extension. So now, this is all the ingredients for the base recipe of our script, but we need to tell it where to find all its files, and that's what the FX manifest is for. In here, we declare the FX version, the game type, the client, server, and shared environments. And this essentially acts as a pointer to tell our server where exactly each of its files are and where to start them. It really could be the most important file in your script because it really acts like the spine and all the glue that holds your whole script together. Without it, the script would not be able to function as it would even know where to begin. I'll link the 5M docs page for FX Manifex down in the description below so you guys can read a bit more if you guys are interested. Now let's go to the main file inside of the client folder and we'll write our first function. So here we're gonna write print hello world in brackets. We're gonna let this print function call just float at the top of our code here, and it's going to be an example of chunk execution. But what is a chunk? So a chunk is essentially just a section of information, and at this point in time, our single line call for print here would be our chunk. But any lines that we added to the bottom of this would also be part of the chunk. After restarting the script, we have our print statement in the console. Now let's go back to that main file and add some extra print statements and make this chunk a bit chunkier. Now an interesting thing that we can take advantage of is that all of our code will all execute exactly once. And it will do that from top to bottom on the client and the server and in the shared environments. Now this can actually lead to some interesting ways of utilizing it and optimizing code. Earlier, I mentioned environments, but what is an environment in the context of coding? So all an environment is, is a structure of which a program operates. So the client has its own environment, the server has its own environment, and the shared as well has its own environment. And the, actually, the best way to think of this is that the client and the server both sit at the same level, they're both on the same level in the environment, but they both operate independently of each other in our script. So they're two little boxes sitting next to each other, and then the shared is another environment on top of that, which can then trickle into both the separated client and server environments. So let's do the same thing we did in our client files and go write a print statement in our server main.law. It's important to keep in mind that the server environment will initialize the second that the server starts. So as soon as your script starts, that server environment is live and running. But the client environment will not initialize until the client joins. Now, instead of seeing our string pop up in the client console, we're actually seeing our string pop up in the server console. So that's all good and well, but how do we actually talk between the client and the server? And that's events. Now, this is an instruction that's either sent from the user or from one of the environments. To explain events, we're gonna use on resource start and we're gonna add a print to it. But to use an event, we have to first add a way to listen to it. So we use the function call add event handler followed by the event name 
the function and any parameters of the function to listen for that event. In this case, on resource start, its only parameter is the resource name. But for me, I like to shorten this to just resource. It's always good practice to check if the script that's triggering the event is actually the script that we're coding in. So to do this, we use a one line return checking the resource parameter against git resource name to make sure that it's the same name. And if it's not, we'll return n and we'll essentially put our function to sleep. So let's put our print in here and restart the script. We can use events to chain things together or even pass data across environments. Now let's step it up a notch. We'll go and chain this with a server event and this time I'll use a different function call register net event. The register net event function works the same as the add event handler function where its parameters are the event name and the function or callback we want to have triggered when that event is fired. So we'll add another print statement here and then we'll go into our client main.lua and we'll add the trigger server event function call so that our event is fired. Now let's restart our script and see this print in the server console. Something of note when you're triggering events from the server is, is actually an extra parameter which is the source. Now this is the player you want to trigger the event back onto but it actually has a special parameter which is negative one so that will actually trigger it onto all active players in your server at that time. Well that's all we have for today. We covered basic function calls and an introduction to events. If you want to find out anything more about what was discussed today, I'll have some links in the description below for some further reading. If this video helped you or you learnt something new, don't forget to drop us a like and subscribe. Also, thank you to today's sponsor, One of One Servers, who you can check out their link down below in the description. But most importantly, make sure you guys stay Dons.